Hello folks, welcome to the Wolf Den one more time. What I'm doing here is actually an unboxing. You know those unboxing videos that everybody just loves to death on YouTube? Well, the reason I'm doing one is because this is a little monumental for me. A little monumental. Let me move some of this junk out of the way. The reason I'm doing it is for the sheer fact that this box is full of spinning reels. And what am I? I always tell everybody just as because it's, I, I call it funny. I think it's funny. I'm an anti-spinite. Okay. I kind of got that from Seinfeld when Kramer called Jerry an anti-dentite because he didn't like going to the dentist. Right? So, I live in a Seinfeld-type world. And this box was supposed to be delivered, oh, before the 4th of July, and it never came. Well, it came, and I missed the delivery by 10 minutes. I will be opening this, and it doesn't look like I have to do too much to do it here. But let's pull out the old Havilon Barracuda knife here. I got me four fin oars. Lethal 40 LT 40s. And I didn't get them for me, folks. I got them for you. Because, see this right over here? Let me pan the camera over. See that right over here? I got all the reels that I ever need. And they're called Daiwa Ryogas. And Daiwa Zillions. I don't need no spinner. Spinning tackle in the charter fishing business. Is a, as I put on my fishing report blog the other day. Is a necessary evil. Because the general public aren't avid. They have not a lot of tackle handling skills. And I mean, it sounds terrible to say that, but I'm, I mean, it's, I'm not talking about it being terrible. I'm talking about it being the truth. Okay, so here we are. We're going to unbox the first one. There's many videos about the Finor. There she be. Nice. Uh-oh, where's the handle? Good God. There's the handle. Okay, just all over the floor. It's okay. So, let's get out the handle here. Finor. The whole deal with them, I'm going to put on my glasses for a second here. The whole deal with these Finors, or Finors in general, from what I kind of gather, is they're a good quality product and they don't cost an absolute fortune. Okay. Let's see if I can do this here. Put this handle on. Or it goes on like that. That's right. Duh, it's a spinning reel. <laughs> Alright, so there we go. When I what I read is these are like or what I've been told is these are like some of the top three durable spinning reels on the market for saltwater fishermen today. Um, I went with Finor because I have those Finor uh, sport fishermen uh, like 3-aught and 4-aught type reels that I use for shark fishing. 
simple, durable, and um, just a just a nice nice reel. So I'm go I went with these because let's say if you put braid on them, right? And your braid it would be you know a pound test of eight to ten mono or twelve. You got two hundred seventy yards of eight. 230 yards, 10, and 200 yards, 12. And I was using these really kind of cheapy, and they worked, but these little cheapy, um, uh, what were they called? Okuma trios. And on a 30-pound red, they strip out. So these are a little bit bigger, a little heftier. And... From what I gather, these got some pretty salt water worthiness to them. Okay, I've seen people do this. I don't know. There we go. Um, under this knob here, you've got this gland, like a gland right there greased gland that goes down in there and does not allow salt water just to pour down in the spool. Then what you have is double bearings right on top right there. Okay. And like many of the spinning reels today, where's the box? I believe many spinning reels today they give you these extra washers and what it is is so you can adjust the line lay on the spool okay so let's pull this out just so you can kind of see and I can see the Akumas did the same thing and I'm sure many other reels are doing it too let's put them in there so you could adjust how you want the line to stack okay and I guess that's important these days because of the use of braided line but how to adjust the line lay on your spinning reel spool line stacking towards the bottom spool adjustment washer right okay remove spool remove one adjustment washer from spool shaft line stacking towards the top spool adjustment washers remove spool add one additional washer to the spool shaft that's the one thing that kills me about spinning reels is you got to pay attention to it now you're going to say to yourself well i use them all the time dave and i don't pay attention to nothing you know why because you use it all the time. You got to remember, fishing tackle is like a computer. You know, people can check their email, but that doesn't mean that they know how to build a website. You know what I mean? Seven bearings. It's got that schmancy uh, little braid collar system going on here. Uh, I don't see anything else that's all super special. But that's all I wanted. I wanted something simple, big handle, large line capacity. Last October, we hooked into two monster redfish fishing shallow water. It was like eight, nine feet of water. And these big old bull reds were up in there while we were catching a sheep's head, a drum, um, a trout, a sand trout, a weak fish, um, you know, a speckled trout. And um, all of a sudden, it was within like four days apart of each other or something, I think. Um, I got a video somewhere. I tried to find it on my YouTube channel. I can't even find it. I got so many videos, I can't even find my own damn videos. But we tried to find it. Or I tried to find it a video where the Akuma trios were just spooled. We were just totally getting spooled. 
and the redfish ran around some crab trap. I had to pull the anchor, all that. Well, you know what I always believe in fishing? In the world of fishing, I always kind of go by this motto. It's kind of like Florida is. It's a stand your ground state. Florida is a stand your ground state. And I always say, stand your ground. I don't like having to follow fish. Because then fish take you on some kind of joy ride. I'm spooling these up with Cast King. Got a brand new spool of it right here. Cast King Super Power Braid, 30 pound. All right. You know, I'll give a little two thumbs up to a fellow YouTuber, Matt Rhodes from Matt Rhodes Fishing or uh, YouTube channel. I didn't really want to believe in this stuff, okay, as far as its strength, its durability, its castability, or anything. I didn't want to believe it. And then I saw Matt talking about it, and he was really into it. And then they came out with stuff called Super 8 which is eight strand, eight carriers, okay, all stranded together, spun together, whatever the heck, how they make this stuff. And let me tell you something, I've used that, and it is awesome lime. I've got it on one of my Ryogas over here in lime green, and I can cast a country mile, man. So... This kind of reminds me of Power Pro. I mean, it kind of has that feel to it. It does have a bit of a coating, okay? Because you take it and you go like that and it will hold that shape a little bit. And I'll tell you honestly, I've always liked line that sort of does that. But then you're going to lose that after a while of usage, of course. But I like a little stiffer stiffer braid that has some kind of coating or something on it, right? I don't like the super duper duper limp stuff. Um, I believe probably on spinning tackle. Uh, this will definitely help out with all those wind knots and all that hooey that all my customers seem to always get. They fish, they fish, they fish, and then they, I look over and I see a big old snarl in their line. And it's not even a knot. I can usually just take both ends and go, don't, like that. Whoop, I hit the camera. I pull it like that, and the knot comes out. I can use spinning gear, and I never get any of that. Because you know why? I pay attention. And as I'm reeling, right, and I'm casting, right, I might cast, right, I always do this. Manually operate the bale. I flip it over manually. Because that makes me, and it makes anybody using one of these, look at the spool, look to see if anything's wrong with it. Because inherently, these things just have human, humongous problems. People think a backlash. Well, guess what? I grew up with bait casting gear my entire life. And a backlash to me is nothing. Nothing. I don't even think about a backlash or getting a backlash out. I don't even work. I don't even worry about it. I've gotten out backlashes that people have done, you know, and it doesn't even worry me. But I don't like to see, using this, wind knots and stuff, or when somebody reels over a whole bunch of loops, and then the next cast, that comes completely off and makes a big old snarl in the line. So, you know, all tackle, I'm sure, has its problems. I've just tried to avoid spinning reel problems my entire life. But, as you can see, I'm going head first. And I've got four of these. And these will be going on brand spanking new ugly stick striper medium heavy spinning rods with the stainless steel eyes the EVA uh, handles with the rubber gimbal in them. 
So, I'm really outfitting you guys for the spinning gear with stuff that I believe in. I really like the Fenor products, and I definitely, definitely uh, love the Ugly Stick striper rods, the white striper rods with the Ugly Tough guides, the foam handles, and that rubber gimbal butt that locks right into a rod holder. I've got my, over here, I've got my Daiichi Seiko, my Daiichi Seiko machine here. So spooling up and if you have to take it off, it's very, very, very easy. <coughs> I did a video all about that. Daiichi Seiko line spooling machine a while back. And I'll tell you, that thing is fantastic. So, alrighty. Thanks for watching. And hopefully, uh, coming up soon, you'll see some people catching some decent fish on these. Especially when we get into fall. October, baby. October.